Bonjour, bienvenue à cette conférence de presse avec euh, la ministre des Affaires étrangères, Mélanie Joly. Euh, la ministre Joly va faire une allocution d'environ cinq minutes. So, Minister Joly will uh, speak for about five minutes and then we have 20 minutes for questions. She will be the only one making a, state, a statement. Um, we also have Julie Sunday, Assistant Deputy Minister for Consular Security and Emergency Management at Global Affairs, that can answer questions. And also the Chief of the Defense Staff, Wayne Ayer. Madame Julie. Merci, Guillaume. Good morning, everybody. Bon matin, tout le monde. As we continue to watch the horrors unfold, I want first to begin by saying that I extend my condolences to all of those who have lost loved ones following the terrorist attacks in Israel. The pain and suffering that we continue to bear witness to cannot be measured. Young lives have been cut short, families have been ripped apart, and it is absolutely heartbreaking. It is being felt in homes and communities across Canada. Le Canada condamne sans équivoque l'attaque terroriste du Hamas contre Israël. Nous soutenons Israël et son droit à se défendre conformément au droit international. Nous savons également que le Hamas n'est pas le peuple palestinien. Il ne représente pas leurs aspirations et n'offre rien d'autre que davantage de chaos, de pertes et de chagrin. La violence doit cesser, les otages doivent être libérés et les vies civiles, israéliennes et palestiniennes, doivent être protégées. Canada unequivocally condemns the terrorist attack by Hamas against Israel. We stand by Israel and its right to defend itself according to international law. We also know that Hamas is not the Palestinian people. It does not represent their aspiration and offers nothing more than more chaos, loss, and heartache. The violence must end, hostages must be released, and civilian lives, Israeli and Palestinians, must be protected. Tragiquement, dans ce contexte de violence, trois Canadiens sont morts. Et j'ai eu l'occasion de parler avec la famille d'Alexandre Luc hier, et je dois vous dire que ça a été un des appels les plus difficiles que j'ai eu à faire de ma vie. My heart is with his family and the families of the others. My thoughts are with their loved ones and their community. May their memory be a blessing. We continue to follow reports of three Canadians who remain missing. We're in contact with their families, providing support, and officials are in contact with local authorities to gather more information. I would like to now speak directly to Canadians who are currently in the region. They're scared. It is a time of great uncertainty and of great anxiety. But I want you to know that we are here for you. We're working around the clock to provide you with the information you need and the support you're asking for. Our office in Tel Aviv and Ramallah are open. Our team is there and our team in Jordan, Egypt and Lebanon are also working around the clock to support you. We have surged the capacity in Ottawa to make sure that we're there to answer your calls and texts 24-7. If you haven't registered yet with Global Affairs, please do so now. You can do so on our website or by calling 613-996-8885. Si vous n'êtes pas encore inscrit auprès d'Affaires mondiales Canada, faites-le dès maintenant. Vous pouvez le faire sur notre site web ou encore en appelant le 613-996-8885. I know that the situation has been difficult and many of you want to return to your family, to home, and want to do so safely and we will help you. We'll begin the assisted departure of Canadians from Tel Aviv in the coming days, by the end of the week, with the help of aircraft from the Canadian Armed Forces. They will arrive in Tel Aviv and bring Canadians to Athens. My colleague, Pablo Rodriguez, and I have been working on the next steps from there. Together, we have secured with Air Canada a plane and a crew to bring Canadians home from Athens. These flights will be available to Canadian citizens, their spouses, and their children, as well as to Canadian permanent residents, their spouses, and their children. Let me be clear, this includes dual nationals, because a Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. 
We're also working on additional options for those who cannot reach the airport in Tel Aviv, and I'll be able to take questions on this. Additional details will continue to be shared over the coming days. I will continue to share them publicly and will also communicate them directly to those who wish to receive the assistance. If you would like our help in leaving and have not registered yet with Global Affairs Canada, please do so now. This is how you will be able to get information on how to leave and we will share information directly with you once you're registered. Je vais maintenant prendre un peu de recul et faire le point sur l'état d'avancement de notre réponse diplomatique à cette crise. Au cours de la fin de semaine, j'ai parlé avec mes homologues d'Israël, de l'autorité palestinienne, de l'Égypte et également de la Jordanie, ainsi qu'avec la Maison-Blanche. Hier, j'ai parlé à nouveau avec mon homologue israélien, mon homologue jordanien et la Maison-Blanche, et j'ai également eu une conversation avec le ministre des Affaires étrangères de l'Arabie saoudite. J'ai réaffirmé la condamnation par le Canada de cette attaque terroriste, par le Hamas, et nous travaillons d'arrache-pied pour veiller à ce que le conflit ne s'étende pas à toute la région. Sur le plan consulaire, nous avions hier soir 4249 Canadiens enregistrés en Israël, 4760 pardon, 476 Canadiens enregistrés en Cisjordanie et à Gaza, et Affaires mondiales a répondu à près de 2000 demandes de renseignements. Finally, before I get to your questions, I would like to take a moment to speak about the situation in Gaza, where civilians are living amidst extremely difficult circumstances. The humanitarian situation in Gaza was dire before this weekend, and this will only deteriorate the situation further. As I said yesterday, this will get worse before it gets better. My heart breaks for the deaths we have seen and then share the anxiety about what will happen next. We urge all parties to respect international humanitarian law and to provide humanitarian access to Gaza. Canada will continue to support the humanitarian needs of the Palestinian civilians. Let me be clear, Israeli and Palestinian civilians deserve to live in peace and safety with their human rights, human, human rights respected and with dignity. And Canada will always work with this in mind. I have with me Julie Sunday, uh, my friend and colleague, Assistant Deputy Minister for Consular Security and Emergency Management at Global Affairs, and my friend, the Chief of Staff, the, uh, the uh, CDS, so Chief of Defense Staff, Wayne Eyre, to help answer your questions now. There will also be a technical briefing uh, later today, and uh, we'll be able to answer some of uh, the details you will uh, absolutely want in the coming hours a bit later today. So I'm here to answer questions with Julie and with Wayne. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Parfait, merci. Alors, donc, on a une, on a une vingtaine de minutes pour les questions. Euh, selon la formule habituelle, une question, une question de suivi. Um, we're going to start with Tonda McCharles. Tonda Starr. Uh, Hi, Tonda doing this. Um, Minister, could you uh, speak a little bit more uh, expansively about what it is you're asking when you say um, international humanitarian law must be respected and be very clear on Canada's position on that? And um, uh, can you address the question of Canadians who may be held hostage? Okay, so I'll start with the last question and come to your first. On the last question, of course, I will not confirm whether Canada has any hostages because I don't want to increase the value and put their uh, lives in danger. Um, what I can say, though, is we've been in contact with the chief negotiator uh, of hostages in Israel, and Canada will be sending a team of experts to support him and his team in his work. Uh, to your question regarding international humanitarian uh, um, a law and, and support. This is the long-standing position of Canada when it comes to any form of conflict, so we just continue to abide by this approach, and this is in line with Canadian legacy around the world. Uh, specifically, though, um, are, you, are you opposing a total siege, as Israeli officials have called it, of Gaza? And also, I just, I'd, like, I'd like to ask, That's if it doesn't get asked here, Donna. In the update, the, are the Canadian diplomats out? Okay, so on your question of, uh, of uh, Gaza, I've answered your question regarding um, international human uh, humanitarian law, and uh, we call upon all parties also to be able to pr 
provide humanitarian access to Palestinian civilians. Uh, so that's uh, your, the answer to your question uh, regarding India. Well, I've said it many times, and I'll continue to say it. Diplomacy is always better when it conversations remain private, and that's the approach I will continue to take when it comes to India. Valérie Michalabains, Radio Canada. Bonjour, Madame Jolie. Donc, est-ce que vous jugez que le blocus qui est exercé en ce moment par le gouvernement israélien à Gaza est conforme au droit international? Comme je l'ai dit en anglais, on en appelle à tous les partis à respecter le droit international humanitaire. C'est important. Ça a toujours été la position du Canada. Um, et nous allons continuer à, à soutenir cette position. J'ai eu plusieurs conversations diplomatiques à ce sujet. Et c'est important aussi que um, nous puissions avoir un corridor humanitaire dans la région. Et c'est pourquoi je suis en contact autant avec l'Égypte qu'avec Israël, qu'avec les différents intervenants de la région, particulièrement la Jordanie. Um, et c'est pourquoi nous allons continuer aussi à offrir de l'aide humanitaire aux civils, parce qu'un civil est un civil. Justement, est-ce que vous allez évacuer des Canadiens qui se trouvent à Gaza? Si oui, comment est-ce que vous allez vous y prendre? Et peut-être aussi, mentionné en français, ce que vous avez mentionné à ma collègue Tanda sur euh, euh, la possibilité d'avoir des otages canadiens euh, okay. en Israël. Donc, je vais continuer par la, der la dernière partie de votre question. Après, je, réponds, je répondrai à, à la suite. Euh, au niveau euh, des otages, bien entendu, je ne confirmerai pas que le Canada a des otages parce que je ne veux pas augmenter la valeur de ces otages et mettre nécessairement leur vie en danger. Mais ce que je peux vous dire, c'est que nous avons été en contact avec les négociateurs en chef des otages en Israël et nous allons envoyer un, un groupe d'experts pour euh, le soutenir et soutenir son équipe. Euh, quant à la question euh, de l'évacuation, euh, nous sommes en train de regarder différentes options, euh, particulièrement euh, pour ceux et celles qui seraient en Cisjordanie, et nous avons été en contact avec la Jordanie. Euh, J'ai eu des conversations hier avec le ministre des Affaires étrangères de la Jordanie pour voir comment nous pouvons travailler pour euh, avoir des options commerciales une fois que les Canadiens sont rendus en Jordanie, donc euh, première chose. Quant à Gaza, euh, nous allons travailler certainement avec euh, l'ONU pour voir qu'est-ce qui sera possible dans les prochains jours, euh, comme ça a été le cas euh, par le passé lorsque le Canada fait, avait fait une évacuation de Canadiens à partir de Gaza. David Baxter, Global. Good morning. Um, I was just wondering, um, does uh, Canada have an idea of how many Canadians are in Gaza specifically, and are there efforts to get them out? So this was the question I was just answering in French, um, but um, two things. We have around 500 people that have registered with Global Affairs Canada, not only in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. So I don't have the information directly. Uh, right now regarding Gaza per se. Uh, what I can tell you also is that uh, should the uh, United Nations work on an evacuation, we would be working with them. We've done so in the past, uh, but uh, at this point there has been uh, no um, uh, information coming from the UN regarding evacuation as we speak. But we keep our, our options open, and uh, as for the West Bank per se, uh, we are looking at options through Jordan. I've been in contact with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Jordan, and once Canadians would be in Jordan, then they would have access to commercial flights, and I've been in contact with commercial uh, airlines as well to be able to do that. Right. And yeah, this question uh, may be better suited for uh, General Air. Um, what can you tell us about the timing of these flights, of course, the attacks happened Saturday morning. People quickly went into hiding. It's Wednesday now. We're hearing that these flights uh, should be arriving uh, by the end of the week. So what can you tell us about um, you know, that timeline on from Saturday to potentially Friday before we're seeing uh, flights uh, taking Canadians out? I'll, you know, and Wayne can, can answer, but um, I knew you would be asking that question uh, because this is a question that um, is, is, is we are in a situation right now where usually when there are still commercial flights, we don't do assisted departure. This is quite rare. Um, you know, we have uh, the experience even in Sudan where uh, we all worked together six months ago to evacuate Canadians, but there were no uh, commercial flights left. But as uh, people were seeing their flights 
going to Canada canceled or indefinitely delayed, we had to step up and take a decision to do so. And that's why we decided to work with the Canadian Armed Forces and also uh, with Air Canada. Um, but um, also, I think it's important that uh, Canadians know that when they're in a part, parts of the world where uh, conflict uh, uh, happens, well, we're there to help. Um, but I think that Wayne can provide more information based on no, that's this context. No, that's exactly it. So Ben Gurion Airport is still open for commercial traffic. Um, we got the request, the formal request yesterday, but uh, once this uh, uh, once this conflict started, uh, we immediately started planning, uh, developing options, taking a look at uh, the possibilities of what support we could provide. Uh, so there's been a tremendous amount of concurrent activity ongoing as this situation has unfolded. Maybe I, would, I would just add also, um, it became clear over a number of days that Canadians needed our assistance getting out. So we were having increased calls to our emergency watch and response center. Um, and it was clear that commercial flights were getting harder and harder to access. Thanks. Ryan, uh, National Post. Hi, Ryan. Morning. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on that. Uh, mm -hmm. You say that we don't, we don't typically do this when a commercial airport is up and running. There are flights leaving for Athens from Ben Gurion later this hour. Uh, I'm wondering what about this situation is different uh, that you feel compelled, like what are you hearing from people about their ability to get flights, not just to Canada, but to elsewhere that could get them to Canada mm -hmm. like this? Well, because there were so many cancellations and also flights that were just indefinitely delayed and people were not getting a real answer whether they would be rebooked, it created a big backlog. And so that's the issue and options were becoming uh, you know, much more limited. And so that's why we decided to act. Um, but it is a very um, exceptional circumstance because usually, like I just mentioned, this is something that, uh, you know, Canada has, has rarely done. And do you have an estimate of how many flights you'll be running? How, you, do you have an, how long you'll be running these flights? How many people you expect to uh, bring out with the Canadian military and I also wonder General Air maybe you could speak to this what the Canadian military isn't exactly awash with extra resources what are you canceling to be able to do these flights so both uh, great questions so firstly we are uh, committing two CC 150 Airbuses uh, to this in fact the first one will be landing in Athens uh, in the next hour or several hours um, and we'll be doing a shuttle uh, between um, Ben Gurion Airport and Athens um, we're doing a tabletop exercise later today with all the partners involved, Global Affairs, IRCC, to work out the, uh, the most effective and efficient way of doing this to make sure that we've got the flow. That will determine the, um, the, the, the number of flights that we do per day. Uh, it'll be demand driven, uh, how many people are asking to, to get out. And so those details will uh, evolve over the course of the next few hours. Yeah, there is, uh, to your second question, there is an opportunity cost uh, to this, uh, but no mission is more important than protecting uh, Canadians here at home or overseas. You want to add, Judy, to that? I, I would just say that we, we are uh, ramping up our resources in the region through our standing rapid deployment team. So we are sending uh, folks from Europe uh, who are at our missions in Europe into Tel Aviv and into Athens to support this operation. Thanks. And if I can add to that, I had many conversations with the CEO of Air Canada yesterday along with my colleague Pablo Rodriguez. And so that's why since Air Canada has a, a hub in Athens, that's why we will be running uh, uh, through Athens uh, this, this operation. Marika Walsh, uh, Globe and Mail. Good morning. Uh, thanks for Hi, taking Mark our King. questions. Um, just... Um, uh, on on two things that you've already talked about. Uh, first of all, we're hearing from Canadians that haven't been getting anything other than auto responses from the federal government that had their phones ring off the hook at the embassy all weekend with no response. Um, and we're given auto replies from the federal government with suggestions such as don't travel to Israel when they're already there. So why was the response so sort of scattered and patchwork maybe if others were getting through? 
And what's your message to Canadians who decide to stay in Israel beyond this week? Is this sort of the only chance they're getting for a Canadian government flight? Mm -hmm. Or is more available later if they decide to get out later on? Mm -hmm. So uh, first and foremost, we will act and take decisions based on the number of Canadians that have registered. So that's why I've been giving the phone number so many times, because this will have an impact on how many flights will be available. Uh, but at one point, government flights will be over, and Canadians will have then to take the decisions on what will happen next. Uh, so we're offering this option, and we're looking at the option through Jordan as well. But these will be the options that will be available in the next days, and then Canadians take their decision. Um, we don't have uh, an evaluation of how many Canadians usually are in the country, because they're not obliged to register with uh, uh, Global Affairs Canada. It is a voluntary system. So that's why when people are registered, then they get information from consular services. And they've been, they, they've been able to have access to information since the weekend from the moment they've been registered. The, um, there, is been, there, there has been a surge of asks, of demands, uh, because of the situation that took everybody by surprise on Saturday. Um, and that's why quickly we reacted. And the team in Israel needed support. And that's why the embassy in Egypt, in Jordan, and Lebanon, and also, of course, the office here in Ottawa stepped up and helped. Uh, the embassy, contrary to what certain people were saying, was open on Thanksgiving, and it had also some interruption over the weekend based on what was happening on the ground, and that was a similar situation as what the UK embassy did, the, um, the uh, German embassy, and also the Swedish embassy did. So we were working along with allies and also looking at where the Canadian embassy is located in Tel Aviv. Now, Merke, I know that people are, are scared. Nobody knew this would happen. This is a, a, one of the worst terrorist attack in, in Israel's history. So that's why we're presenting options today. Uh, and that's why our consular services have been 24-7 at this. So maybe, Julie, you can add to that? Yeah, I would just add that. Um, so our emergency watch and response center is staffed 24-7. Um, there are there have been no delays in terms of calling and answering, getting uh, responses. This, there has been a surge in the last 24 hours, so people are waiting a couple minutes on hold. Um, but on those calls, we're taking all the information we need um, in terms of asking people if they require help, if they need, uh, would like to be considered for an assisted departure. Um, we are also um, going back uh, to the list of people who have called us right now uh, and asking for additional information if we don't have it uh, to ensure that uh, we're able to support them. Um, in terms of the, the message that went out, we, we did update our travel advice on the weekend and agree that is focused on people um, to sort of um, give them information uh, to allow them to make decisions about their, their own travel. Um, it was, uh, it shifted to a, a um, only essential travel to Israel over the weekend, um, but we also had a lot of information about regional issues that would have been relevant to individuals in Israel as well. So it's it's a mix. It's uh, it's for both those traveling to and those who are already there in the country. Thanks. Thank you, and, and Mr. Jolie, as a follow up, mm -hmm. um, Anthony Blinken is heading to Israel. Are you planning a similar trip? And is Canada planning any sanctions or any sort of response on its own in response to Hamas's attack? So uh, I've been in contact with the White House yesterday, and I've been in contact with many uh, important players in the region, uh, and I'll continue to do so, and I'll have more to say in the coming hours on this issue. You know, there, yeah, I'm a busy question. woman, Marie Kay. On, on sanctions or, or on a trip? Which so, one is that? So on all of these subjects, I'm working 24-7 on this. Meanwhile, there's so many issues happening in the world and trying to address all of these. Uh, but my goal right now is to make sure that 
this assisted departure is well done. And I'm happy to be here because I'm able to be in the presence of Wayne and Julie and we're able to work together. So that's my first uh, priority. And second, my second priority is really to help um, I'm working with partners to de-escalate because I'm concerned about what's going on in the region. I'm concerned that this could be a second front to uh, what is happening in the world as we are also dealing with Ukraine, which is our first front. And so uh, that's why I've been uh, talking to many, many of my colleagues and been uh, in contact with them every hour. Kate McKenna, CBC. Uh, off the top of your remarks, you updated the list of numbers of people dead and missing. I'm just wondering if you're able to confirm the death of uh, Adi Clapin uh, in Ottawa and if anyone from the federal government has been in touch with that family. So I can't confirm uh, at this point, um, and uh, that's the only thing I can say. What I can say is there's been two dead and three peace people missing. So that's the information that I have right now. Um, and of course, we always uh, are in contact. Usually in these circumstances, we are in contact with families and want to make sure that families are con contacted first and, uh, and they decide whether they confirm. So that's the information I have. Maybe you want to add something on that, Julie? I would, I would just say right now we have one presumed death and we have, um, just to correct yeah. there, we do have um, uh, two confirmed deaths, but we, we need to be in contact with the families before we can release those names. Sorry, two confirmed and one, one presumed. presumed. Yeah. And three missing? Yes. 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 Oui, en français aussi, s'il vous plaît. Donc, yeah. on a deux décès qui sont confirmés, un qui est présumé, et trois personnes qui sont manquantes, qui manquent à la peine. I'm sorry, what does, that, what does that mean, presumed versus confirmed? So we need to have authorities confirm uh, that, we, uh, that a person has died. So they, they do that through um, identification. And uh, that can be quite complex, uh, given the scale of some of the, uh, some of the, uh, the, the attacks. So uh, we're working with Israeli authorities to confirm all of, all of um, what we suspect are, are deaths. Julie, can you just explain how it works that way? People will understand what's the process. Yeah, so um, in terms of we will be notified um, through uh, actually our emergency watch center. Um, often families or friends will call us when they suspect uh, someone has been injured or killed. We then work with our mission uh, in Israel, so in Tel Aviv. They reach out to Israeli authorities and from that uh, discussion, we work with Israeli authorities to confirm the deaths. Uh, and in this, in this case, it's, they've been quite overwhelmed, so it's taken some time. Um, but as I mentioned, we have two confirmed deaths and one presumed death. Um, we will be able to come back with, uh, with more information at the technical briefing later today. Thanks. Annie Bergeron, Oliver, CTV. Uh, in your opening remarks, you mentioned that Canada is going to be sending a team of negotiators to help with the hostages. Can you go into more detail about how many people are going and what exactly this team will be? Well, we can provide um, details at the technical briefing a bit later today. Okay. And the, the Americans are confirming that there are American hostages being held by Hamas. Why won't you confirm that, especially if Canada is sending a team to help with hostage negotiation? Are there Canadians being held hostage by Hamas? So the latest I have from the Americans is um, they say they're missing. They haven't confirmed. The administration has not confirmed per se. Uh, why? Because this is a, a standing approach we take, which in any uh, hostage negotiation we don't confirm. Why? Because we don't want to increase uh, the value of that person in the eyes of, um, of um, their tyrants and, and at the same time we want to make sure that we do everything in our possibility uh, to uh, protect these lives and don't increase the danger. So this is common practice. And it's based also on, on past experience. But Biden, Biden has confirmed that there are 
Americans being held hostage. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just giving you the latest before this morning. I was, it was based on the information I had from Jay Sullivan and his team. So, uh, but what I'm telling you is this is the approach that we will be taking. Uh, Dylan Robertson, uh, CP. Uh, hi there, uh, Miss Sunday. Uh, I'm wondering how many Canadians, uh, the individuals that have reached out for consular assistance, specifically in Gaza, if you could sort of take the number, not just one as a family, but the number of individuals we're looking at, if you are able to give an estimate of how many of those registered within the West Bank and Gaza, of how many of those are in Gaza that you suspect, and if you have any sort of estimate for the total global number of Canadians within Gaza. So the three part is sort of the number that you think are there, the number that have asked for aid, and the number of those registered that you suspect are within Gaza. So in terms of this specific number, I, I don't have that number for you right now, but I can contextualize it by saying out of the 400 you know, and 70 ROCA registrants we have, so it's a smaller number than we have in Israel, we know we do have people who are impacted in the West Bank and, and in Gaza to a much smaller extent in Gaza, but there are Canadians in Gaza. A question for all three. What preparations are being made for a possible Lebanon evacuation? Is anything underway in case that situation starts spiraling out of control? So uh, we are already in contact uh, the three of us and, and, and our teams on the question of Lebanon. But right now, the most important thing is that we call on de-escalation. My goal is to be in contact with Lebanese uh, officials later today, uh, and I won't speculate on that. We have one, la one last question in the room. Uh, Shannon Proudfoot, Global Mail. Thank you. Um, when one of my colleagues asked sort of what you said was the inevitable question about why has this taken so long, uh, you know, why are we here on Wednesday, um, you took that question, Minister, mm -hmm. before General Eyre. Um, those are the kind of questions we always ask, and I know it often makes you guys feel impatient and frustrated, but I wondered if you could give us a bit of the texture or detail of the kinds of things that have to swing into motion or the considerations that have to be made before you can actually move in a situation like mm -hmm. this? Because I think those are fair questions. Why does it take so long? But I think there's probably an interesting answer about why it does. Oui, yeah. merci. Um, I think that um, we live in a world where it, it, people think that things can happen just like this. Um, and clearly, you referred to the question of being impatient. I'm an impatient person by nature. And Julie and Wayne knows this. I like to push for things to happen. Um, and it is important that they happened. Now, um, we got the confirmation from Air Canada that they wouldn't fly over Israel quite late. Um, and at the same time, um, we uh, were working with Air Canada to find a solution to be able to get people out. And so, um, we were also looking at what other countries were doing. The U.S. is not doing an assisted departure. The U.K. is not doing an assisted departure. Germany is not doing an assisted departure. So when we announced last, yesterday night that we would be doing one, we were the first of the five eyes to announce. And during the night, Australia announced and actually worked with us to see what they could do. So. Um, there is definitely an expectation on the part of Canadians for the government to do this, and that's why we are doing it, because we're, call, we're hearing their call uh, for help, because also there's no commercial options directly going to Canada. But we wanted to make sure that we would be in front of you to be able to answer your tough questions with all the details. And that's why we decided to wait a bit, you know, the night. Uh, before uh, being in front of the press and, uh, and, and finalize all the different issues. Um, we had different options out of Cyprus and Athens, and we decided to work with Air Canada out of Athens, and that was uh, finalized over, uh, over the night. So maybe, Wayne, you want to add to that? 
Yeah, I'll add some planning factors that are always considered when we look at something like this. So firstly, what is the demand signal? Uh, so are people actually asking to get out? Secondly, um, what is the security situation? Can we get in there? Uh, thirdly, what is the asset availability? So what, what resources do we have and where are they? And, uh, um, and how quickly can we get them there? Uh, there's, there are um, issues with or factors with respect to overflight clearances, uh, diplomatic clearances for landings, landing slots, uh, et cetera. What our allies are doing, as Minister Jolie mentioned, um, are, are we able to do this as part of a larger partnership? Um, and then what presence do we have in the region that can help us as well? Uh, and so all of those factors have played in this one. They played into Sudan. They played into uh, the evacuation out of Afghanistan. And we continue, And there's going to be more in the future as the world security situation continues to uh, deteriorate. You know, I've been Minister of Foreign Affairs for now two years, and it's my second, it's our second uh, assisted departure in six months. This is rare, but we now know, and we were just talking, the three of us, before this press conference, we'll have to uh, be ready to do more because the world is getting much more of a difficult place to live in. We are living in an international security crisis and with this Middle East co uh, conflict that have, has just started, uh, we know that we have to be ready. Uh, and that's why also the travel advisories that Global Affairs Canada uh, does and, and you know supported also by Julie's work is really important because Canadians need to know when they go to a region what are the risks that are linked to being in that region. But that being said, today is about offering support to Canadians in need, and that's absolutely what we'll do, and that's my first priority. Essentiellement, savoir pourquoi ça prend du temps, et peut-être revenir aussi sur la question de quand est-ce que vous allez vraiment commencer. D'ici la fin de la semaine, vous avez précisé. C'est bon, Valérie, je, je, je vais répondre en français avec plaisir. <rire> euh, mais c'est sûr qu'on vit dans une crise de sécurité internationale présentement qui fait en sorte qu'il euh, y a beaucoup euh, de différents aléas qu'on doit prendre en, cons en considération lorsque on prend nos décisions par rapport à un, 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 des départs assistés. Euh, premièrement, c'est rare qu'on fait euh, une, une opération de la sorte lorsqu'il y a encore... Des, des options commerciales disponibles. Ça a pris du temps avant que, euh, finalement, ça soit clair qu'Air Canada ne, ne vole pas sur Tel, Tel Aviv. Euh, il y avait plusieurs annulations, il y avait plusieurs euh, retards. Mais une confirmation, ça a pris un certain temps. Euh, et puis, en même temps, il y avait plusieurs autres compagnies aériennes qui continuaient de voler. Mais puisqu'il y avait peu à peu tellement de demandes pour des départs qui s'accumulaient, on s'est retrouvé avec une liste de Canadiens qui n'arrivaient pas à quitter euh, Tel Aviv, qui n'arrivaient pas à, à quitter Israël de façon sécuritaire. Alors, c'est pour ça qu'on a décidé d'agir. Et euh, dans les circonstances, on a travaillé euh, avec les Forces armées canadiennes qui ont dû organiser le tout. Et Wayne pourra certainement répondre en français. Euh, c'est sur qu -ce, quels sont les différents détails à prendre en considération. Et aussi, on a travaillé avec les affaires consulaires de l'Affaires mondiales Canada. Il euh, y, y a eu plusieurs appels qui ont été faits. Certainement, j'ai parlé avec Pablo Rodriguez au président de euh, euh, Air Canada hier, euh, qui a offert de l'aide pour faire, euh, euh, à partir de Athènes, des vols euh, avec euh, Air Canada. Air Canada a un hub, comme on dit en bon français, a une plateforme euh, et, et très, très euh, euh, organisée à partir d'Athènes. Euh, J'ai eu plusieurs conversations aussi avec euh, le ministre des Affaires étrangères d'Israël, qui, lui, est très, très, très occupé, comme vous pouvez comprendre. Il était presque 11 heures du soir lorsqu'on s'est parlé pour lui hier et qu'il nous a autorisé à faire, à, à, à faire en sorte qu'un avion militaire canadien puisse atterrir à l'aéroport de Tel Aviv. Donc, euh, voilà, c'est différentes con considérations. Je vous donne un peu de contexte par rapport à ce qui s'est passé, mais peut-être… les premiers parmi les Five Eyes? Oui, c'est ça. En fait, euh, lorsque nous avons annoncé hier, nous étions les premiers parmi le groupe des cinq euh, à annoncer que nous allions le faire. Au cours de la nuit, l'Australie 
à, à annoncer. L'Australie a été en contact avec nous pour savoir comment on peut opérationnaliser le tout. Euh, les Américains ne font pas de, de départ assisté. Euh, la Grande-Bretagne non plus et ni l'Allemagne. Ah. Pour nous, dans la Force armée canadienne, nous devons euh, considérer euh, plusieurs facteurs, euh, plusieurs volets euh, pour notre planification. Euh, L'échelle euh, de, la, de la besoin, euh, la situation euh, sécuritaire, euh, la disponibilité de nos euh, ressources euh, comme les avions et où, 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 où euh, les avions euh, sont dans le monde, euh, l'approbation diplomatique, euh, le, Uh, les activités de nos alliés um, et ainsi que uh, notre présence uh, dans la région. Um, hi again, I'm taking the follow up for my colleague Shannon. Um, General Air, I, I just want to ask you on a separate story. The courts dropped the charges against uh, General Kadia yesterday, citing in large part the military police's nine month delay in handing over files for the delay. How do you respond to that when now uh, the military justice system seems to be failing both the accused and complainants? So I have been completely consumed in the issue that we're talking about at this press conference, and I've had no time uh, to be briefed on it or to ask any follow-on questions or indeed to reflect on it. So I don't have an answer for you at this point. So that were dropped in the last six months. So, you know, same thing. Uh, we're, we're here to talk about the evacuation from, uh, from Israel. And I've, uh, I need to get briefed in more detail on this. C'est ce qui met fin à la conférence de presse. Merci tout le monde.